Hey guys, I thought I should make a video um, about the Aston Martin. It's been quite some time since I've had this car and a nice gentleman asked me to make a video about my experience so far. I think it's about five or six months um, since I've bought this car. So far, I think it's still early days uh, with the car because it's the first Aston Martin I've owned and it is a lovely car to drive. So I suppose since I've had so many Porsches over the years, it was very easy for me to judge them and decide whether I like it or not and then discard it or change it to a newer car. However, in this case, this is my first Aston Martin, so touch wood, it hasn't given me any trouble, which is the main thing. Um, in terms of the driving experience, it's utterly delightful. The car is beautifully crafted and the engine specifications, everything is just exactly how I want. There's one small modification that I made. Um, because this car is so understated, the exhaust only comes on up to, I think, 1,800 or 1,000 revs, and after that the valve closes, so it becomes very sedate and quiet, and sometimes when you're driving it um, in the manual mode, or a bit in a sporty way, you want to have a little bit of the exhaust note. So, and that only comes on after 3,000 revs, which for a 6 litre V12 with 550 brake horsepower, you don't necessarily need that much um, high rev range. So you end up having a very quiet and fast car. So I've bought this little gadget from this guy uh, who owns an Aston Martin and he realized that he was having the same issue and he's developed this little relay which connects to the, or replaces the exhaust valve um, relay and you have this little remote control that you press the button and now the exhaust will remain open all the time, which is quite nice. So that's the only change I've made. I'll switch it back off so you guys can hear me. And otherwise, I don't really think there is anything I want to change in this car. There's the, you, some of you may have noticed in my previous video, I've put a yellow stripe on the car and had the roof um, wrapped in black and that's because I'm planning to wrap the rest of the car in a green color, sort of British racing green perhaps. I haven't decided exactly what color which is why I haven't done the rest of it but I wanted to see how I felt with this yellow stripe because I saw a picture of a, an Aston Martin repeat from the Aston Martin Racing Edition AMR and it is green with the black roof and has a yellow stripe. Obviously it has different bumpers and black uh, wheels and quite a few other sporty things. I think the interior might be Alcantara but that's a different car and I don't know if I want to own a car like that is my everyday car because I have the 911 which has Alcantara and all the sportiness so it's nice to have a car that's a bit more sedate and suits my age and image. As they say it should be age and wage appropriate <laughs> so I don't earn a lot of money in spite of what some of you may think I'm not loaded, it's just that I don't have children, which cost a lot of money. Those of you who have children know 
it's an Aston Martin each. So if you have four kids, you practically own four Aston Martins, just not cars. So anyway, the bottom line is that I want to have a car that suits my image and the kind of person I am, and I don't want it to be too sporty, so I put this thing just for a little bit while I enjoy myself and get it out of my system, if that's such a thing. Anyhow. So about the car itself, as some of you may have uh, noticed that I have installed a Bang & Olsen system in the house. So the car, in fact, cost me more money <laughs> over and above what I spent on the car because I got addicted to the sound system in this car so much so that when I got home I didn't want to listen to the sound system at home. Which, prior to that, wasn't too bad. It did the job, but nonetheless, I felt the urge to change it. And that's cost me an awful lot of money, but it's worth every penny. Um, now I don't want to leave the house, <laughs> so I want to just listen to the music at home, or in this car, so this car gets driven more, because it's comfortable, it's powerful, it sounds good, and it doesn't attract the wrong kind of attention. The Porsche gets thumbs up and some evil looks. This car only gets thumbs up and uh, some nods from people who like the look of Aston Martins. I guess James Bond has done well in promoting Aston Martins and what it stands for. But also, this car has a long history, English heritage. So, back to the experience. Uh, the technology that everyone says is backward and outdated in many cars these days, actually, not just Aston Martins. I prefer it like that. I want to know where various buttons are, so when I get into my car, I just press buttons and I focus on the road. I absolutely hate what they've done in the new Panamera with the big um, electronic infotainment system, or whatever it's called these days because those cars just, um, they take your attention away from driving and you're fiddling with systems that you shouldn't be. I mean, f for example, one thing that really I thought was absolutely buffoonish and stupid of Porsche to do is that the central vents in the Panamera, in the new model, you can't control them manually. If you're driving around at night and you want to change the direction of the air flowing through these vents or t switch them on or off, I'd rather just feel it and know where I'm pointing it because I can feel the air and I can feel the direction. In that car you have to go through a menu and they're electrically controlled, so you have to click on these sliders. I absolutely hate that. And the worst thing is, those idiots didn't think that that's the one I can't reach on the passenger side. So if I want to demist that window, I have to reach to that um, far vent. But in the Panamera, that's manual. But these ones, which you can reach, are electronic. Anyway, whoever came up with this should undo it because it's absolutely moronic. But in this car, the sat-nav works. It does the job very well. It tells you the lanes, which in a, I sh think I mentioned in one of my previous videos, it does really well. Everything else is just great. The only one thing that I wish they had done was to put that uh, heated windscreen. Uh, in all the Range Rovers I've owned, they've had heated windscreens, and the Jaguars I've owned, they've all had heated windscreens. It's quite handy when it's snowing or when it's frozen outside, you press a button and within 30 seconds your windscreen is sort of back to how it should be. Whereas, for some reason, they haven't done it in this car and it's a little bit of a pain. Right! So 
the way it was I. Oh yeah, while I was talking about the Bang & Olsen system and the stuff that I've done at home, I should actually show you the changes I've made to that system. Because, as you know, I had that cabinet that I had created as a audio-video cabinet, which was actually a sideboard, by cutting it up. When you close the doors, everything inside was baking and heating, and the worst thing was I was keeping my candles in there, so that wouldn't be very suitable to keep candles in a very warm environment. Anyway, I've removed the candles, but nonetheless, all that equipment needed to be cooled down, so I'll show you what I've done there. Because I packed everything into this cabinet, it would become very hot with this massive amplifier, or receiver as they call it. And then we have the Blu-ray Disclare, the BioLab transmitter, there's a little Apple TV, a lot of technology. There's also a little Airport Express there. So I had to buy this thing, which is the AC Infinity thing. Well, that's the brand, but basically it's a thermostat, temperature controlled fan. It has three fans in it. It's very slim and thin, sits on top of the receiver, and when it senses that the temperature is too high, it then switches itself on. It's fairly quiet. See, it's fairly quiet in a quiet room, so you can't hear the noise of the fan. Now, in addition, what I had to do was to drill some holes in the back and cut another piece off uh, just to get some air in and also drill some holes down there and as you can see my electric drill with that little bit at the front a bit of a mess but overall the system should work without overheating oh yeah in addition i bought this little speaker basically it's a center speaker because i realized that for video, I needed a center speaker for the sound. It's really nice, um, an English brand. Sound quality is fantastic. What's it called? Let me check. Uh, Q Acoustics. Obviously this is not promoted or paid. This is just something I bought um, and I like it, so I thought you should know. What I liked most about it was the walnut finish so when I move to another place or have something different, this walnut finish would look rather nice with it. The other thing I added recently are these new switches. So they are Wi-Fi or rather radio frequency connected to and, and these LED lights. I had to change all of them to be um, dimmable and now that switch controls the lights above me so I can have dimmed lights. The rest of the lamps in this room are already the Philips um, Hue lamps so they can be controlled remotely through Alexa and through the apps so when I'm watching TV they dim. I also had to change these because I wanted to have the same control over these. It's pretty handy. Um, the good thing is that it comes with these, this little remote that you can dim the lights and set them to your own preferences. In addition, I bought this Broadlink Pro Plus. This is a device that uh, has radio frequencies to control the lights as well as infrared. So it controls the television and everything. Um, so you can pretty much automate the whole thing. So when you say... Back to the car thing again. I used to take this route to work. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but I'm running a separate camera that should show... This road isn't very wide as it is. But it was okay because you didn't have to slow down too much to drive through it and when you got to this end it had really lovely four lanes. So as you approach the traffic lights 
more cars could squeeze up to leave. They've now changed it to a single lane and widened that pavement. Now, this area, there's a horrible, ugly council block here. This whole area is very ugly looking and the government and the council should be spending money on improving the living conditions of the people who live in these housing estates. What's the point of having a brand new wide pavement to walk on when you look up and you live in that house? One that you're, you don't have enough money and the government's subsidizing your housing and then you live in this ugly monstrosity. How much damage does it do to your morale and your ego? So instead of spending money narrowing the roads and making people's lives worse, because obviously this will cause pollution, which the government doesn't care about, but that's our new government. Our mayor believes in narrowing the roads to discourage people from driving. Now, narrowing the roads may discourage some, others have no choice, and all the deliveries, the vans, the public transport, buses being part of that, will be stuck in traffic, further delays, and a lot of pollution. Plus, if you're discouraging people in an overcrowded, overburdened city where the infrastructure is creaking, you're pushing all that weight onto the public transport, which, as I've shown, is absolutely nuts. So, I don't know what he's trying to achieve, but I don't think he thinks or has a brain. He's an absolute moron who's destroying our city. People vote for morons with no qualifications, who then destroy their lives. And as I've made a left turn, you might be able to see here's another massive council estate in a really, really bad state. I don't know what it will take. Another fire? Some people dying before they do something about it? How are they going to spend money on narrowing the roads because that's what wins them the votes of those morons that believe that narrowing the roads is going to reduce pollution? So the traffic moves at an average of four miles an hour. They say in 1911, uh, the traffic used to move at four miles an hour with the horse-drawn carriages. And in 2011, it was still, I think it may be even less.